Hi, my name is Cindy Shebley from the Web Seller Circle. I'm also the author of the newly released book, The eBay Marketing Bible. And that's what I want to talk to you about today, marketing your eBay business. When most people think of marketing, they think of that used car salesman. Well, I've got some good news for you. And, of course, some bad news. The good news is you don't have to be a pushy salesperson anymore. The bad news? You're going to have to spend more time nurturing relationships instead. It's going to take some time, but once you've built a loyal customer base, you're going to find it's a lot easier to sell your goods. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Set some goals. Look at what your company is, what you want it to be, and what the outcome of your business is. When you have a business plan, it will be much easier to create a marketing plan with actionable goals. Build a marketing plan. Find out who your ideal customer or client is. What do they like to do? Where do they like to go on vacation? Where and how do they shop? And how old are they? Now, a few things have changed with the advent of the internet. That old pushy marketing style tactic of yesterday is no longer effective. People don't really listen to TV commercials, no matter how loud they are. And we don't see billboard ads or banner ads on web pages. So marketers have to understand a little about the new, more social aspects of marketing on the internet. The driving force behind the social media and marketing is as old as business itself, and that is word of mouth. Buyers always shared advice with each other about purchasing decisions, and now it's as easy as a few mouse clicks. People find opinions on every product or purchase from trusted peers by using the internet. As internet sellers, we can harness that power by taking a few simple steps. First, understand what exactly a customer wants from you. According to a recent marketing study called the Edelman Trust Barometer, 88% of respondents reported that they were more likely to buy from a company that they could trust. It's no secret what buyers want from sellers is security and confidence. The Edelman Trust Barometer further states that the most powerful drivers of trust are quality of product and services or services, customer service, and the company's overall reputation. Building your brand around trust and safety is so important, it should be at the heart of everything you do from creating a listing to your follow-up emails. Although you may think these are simply the mechanics of selling on eBay, how you present yourself and your store is marketing your business. Be consistent. Make your store and listings consistent. Create a uniform template and use it throughout your listings. Hire a designer or use a, a service like Octiva or Vivendio. Want to know a marketing secret? 70% of shoppers say a return policy is important to purchase decisions. Offering a money-back guarantee is an important way to gain your customer's trust and close that sale. Buyers need that security when purchasing from a stranger. They're putting out their hard-earned cash on that new widget. They want to get it at a good price, but they are willing to pay extra if they know it's going to work when they receive it. The age of the Internet has brought with it many ways to communicate easily and quickly. Buyers expect quick follow-ups to their answers. And while you may feel you need to sleep once in a while, your customer doesn't think it should be while they're in your store. If you don't have employees or can't be in front of a computer 24-7, eBay has created an easy-to-use solution for keeping in touch with your customers. You can set up a frequently asked question or FAQ 
display for your buyers. When they hit the ask the seller a question, the facts come up and are displayed in a drop down menu. Now your customer can quickly find the answer to the most common questions they have about your products or service. While we are on the subject of customer questions, let's talk a little bit about follow through. Your customer wants to know you received their order, that you are processing it, and that you shipped it. They also want the security of knowing the package was mailed. It is important to most customers to receive an item shipped email. They want to know what service you used and the tracking or delivery confirmation number. If your customer has a problem and needs your action for resolution, promptly attend to it. The sooner you take action, the happier your customer will be. A happy customer is going to tell others about the experience, but the really scary part is that an unhappy customer is likely to tell many more people about their experience than the happy one did. An unhappy customer posting on a blog for hundreds or even thousands of readers is something you really don't want. We've talked a little bit about customer service when it comes to marketing, but let's focus on some specific marketing tools eBay provides. You can build your brand or your unique seller identity by using a store. In a store come some other unique marketing opportunities. Inside your store, make sure your feeds are turned on. The RSS feed is generally always turned on, but you have to toggle on the Make Your File Store Inventory listings available. Once you turn it on, the feed is picked up by Google and your inventory will show up on Google-based listings. This is very important if you want your items to be found by people who shop outside of eBay. Markdown Manager is another hidden gem inside the store feature. This marketing tool may be cyber, but the tactic has always worked in retail marketing. In the bricks and mortar world, stores have sales and advertise them and bring buyers in. Sometimes these promotions are geared around a season, or sometimes they are used to clear out old inventory. Either way, shoppers love sales, and this is one way to entice them into buying or returning to your store. Don't forget your promo boxes. Those are the little boxes that are around your store. One of the important ones is your newsletter subscriber. On your landing page, the promo box above the fold gets the most potential eyeballs, so use that one to collect your newsletter subscribers. You must make it easy for them to find the link to encourage their participation and grant you access to their email inbox. A sample of a short bribe to get them to subscribe to your newsletter might be something like sign up and receive a free report on the history of Blue Willow China. Make the offer compelling enough that they want to subscribe to that newsletter. Offer them a free report, a free membership, an interview, podcast, or even just to be the first to know. The better you can make the offer, the quicker you'll build your email list. Marketers call this an ethical bribe. Tell them what's in it for them if they subscribe. The newsletter is one of the most valuable features eBay store owners have. Keeping a customer is easier than making a new one. The eBay store newsletter is simple to set up. eBay provides templates and even allows you to set up automatic emails you can turn on and forget about. One thing I frequently hear though is, well, I only have a few names on my list. I'm going to wait until I have more people sign up. The time is now to send out that newsletter. Don't wait for more subscribers. Even if you have one subscriber on your list, that one person asks to hear from you and wants to buy more of your products. What are you waiting for? A Harris study showed that 
percent of online shoppers feel compelled to browse an online retail website after receiving an email from that store. Even if it's one person, you're over halfway there to receiving another sale. Don't you want to make more sales? Now that we've talked about sending newsletters and why you should send a newsletter, the next step is deciding what you want to say to your customers. One of the options eBay provides is to send emails automatically once you set it up. These can highlight newly listed items. This is going to be very well received if you specialize in a niche. For example, let's say you sell everything related to soccer. You sell clothes, equipment, and limited edition jerseys from different teams. If your customer is a collector, you can bet he or she can hardly wait to hear when you have their team's new limited edition jerseys in stock. Expanding on the idea of sending out automatic emails when new stuff arrives, let's think about that uh, soccer fan. Our loyal soccer customer might be the, want to be the first one to know, so sending them that special su subscriber only alert lets them know when the jersey will be available. Another thing you can do is set up an email for pre-ordering the jerseys so that the buyer doesn't have to worry about forgetting the date. Customers love to be treated specially and will respond by purchasing. Sales are another topic for your newsletter. Using Markdown Manager and the newsletter feature makes a surefire one-two punch to pick up sales. Set up the sale to start in a couple of weeks. Send out one newsletter to announce the date, and seven days later, send a second newsletter to announce the beginning of the sale. To build rapport with your customers, it's good to mix your newsletters up a little bit. Offer them more than just information about sales. Make it a habit of contacting your subscribers with tidbits about your company or product benefits, or information related to the product. One seller uses his newsletters to send out inspirational quotes. His subscribers love them and forward them on to friends. A fishing supply store might provide news and tips about the latest techniques, regulations, or hot new fishing spots for trying that gear out. Have you ever stumbled onto the My World link and wondered what it was? eBay rolled this out with much ado a few years ago, and some said it's going to replace the traditional feedback page, and others have said that it's going to replace that About Me page. But most everybody agrees that it was it is eBay's attempt to make eBay more social or Web 2.0. It's become your hub of everything about you. It's also a fantastic place to put in good keywords to build your search engine optimization. You may not get a lot of visitors there, but the Google, Yahoo, MSN, and those search engines send their spiders through there and pick up good keyword rich words and attach them to your My World page, which has a link to your products. Always a good thing in building search engine optimization. On eBay, it's no surprise that your main customer base will be from the site itself. So it's of vital importance that you continue to produce keyword-rich titles and excellent ad copy to get your buyers into the shop. However, it's good business to find customers yourself. So go out there and build Web 2.0 social networking networks, and you can do that right on eBay to build highly qualified traffic for your store. That's internet marketing speak for buyers who want to buy your products. But make no mistake, social marketing takes time to succeed. You must build relationships with potential clients and participate in their chosen venue. Think of it as online networking. When you're, you network outside your business, whether in person or on the web, it takes FaceTime. You must be present.
Again, remember, you need to figure out where your ideal customer hangs out and go there, whether it's in person or online. Today we're talking about marketing on eBay specifically, so we're going to go over a few of the social features eBay has built in. One of the most notable features of eBay has always been the feeling of community. Like-minded individuals talk to each other about collectibles, the weather, eBay itself, or any of the thousands of different topics. There are forums to talk to the staff, town hall meetings to talk to management, workshops that help sellers. This early adoption of the community features helped skyrocket eBay to the number one place to buy and sell on the internet. eBay continues to roll out new social features that help sellers promote their business and buyers to find products they are looking for. Let's take a look at a few of the ways you can use them to build a tribe of qualified buyers. A relatively new feature on eBay, neighborhoods were started in early 2008. A neighborhood is a place for eBay members to share information or interact with other like-minded people. Buyers and sellers or anyone who wants to participate in the neighborhood can include photos and eBay listings. These communities are built around a theme. An interested eBay member can petition eBay to start a neighborhood. Unlike the group section, the neighborhood must be uh, approved. eBay isn't looking for duplicate neighborhoods around the same theme. One of the most popular neighborhoods is the Coffee Lovers neighborhood, with over 8,000 subscribers. These groups are designed to allow you to post and comment on topics specific to the neighborhood. If you were selling coffee-related products, here is an excellent way to get your product seen by a targeted group of potential buyers. eBay itself populates the neighborhoods with products, reviews, and guides, and the eBay blogs that are related to the theme. That means even if you are not a specific neighborhood member, but just position your, your posts on eBay to match the neighborhood, you'll have a chance to show up on the page. If you keep your DSRs high, this is one place where best match will work for you. Chances are a thumbnail photo of your listing will show up here when the visitor clicks in. These groups are your chance to shine. Post as an expert. Don't be pushy. Just answer questions that come up and offer information about your products. You are allowed to link to items on eBay. Again, though, don't be over ambitious or you'll get ignored or yelled at. However, if you stay honest, become a member and post over time, an occasional post about your new products is going to be well received. The neighborhoods are designed to be friendly places to hang out and socialize. Keep that in mind. The eBay discussion boards are designed to help users find information about anything they might seek. The topics range from eBay specific to product sourcing and beyond. eBay sorts the discussion boards by community help boards, eBay tools, and category specific. Experts and eBay employees come together to help answer questions and to help each other out. Just like the neighborhood, this is your chance to participate. Join the conversation, ask questions, and help out whenever possible. There's also the groups. You can find a group on just about any topic. And if there isn't one already, you can start your own group dev devoted to your subject. If you have a knowledge of collectible coins, you could help other coin collectors in the group. If a buyer has a question about a particular type of coin that you specialize in, here is a fantastic way to build trust with the potential buyers by answering their questions. When you post a reply, eBay includes your user ID and feedback score. When you set up a group, you can also make the group public or private. Now, from a marketer's perspective, we often think of getting the most potential qualified buyers you can. 
Thus, you'd want to keep the group public to maximize your potential subscribers. However, with the advent of the eBay neighborhoods and the discussion boards, as a marketer, you've already got that covered. Simply find the neighborhood or board best suited to your product and start leaving footprints. But here's a little marketing secret. People love exclusive access. They pay extra to join private clubs, talk to mentors, and to be the first in line for new gadgets. As an eBay seller, you can take advantage of that by offering your buyers exclusive access. The formula? Create an eBay group and make it private. Then, as a value-added bonus, offer your customers access to your exclusive private group. This group could be about how to use your product, how to maximize the usage, or even a collector's group. Let's say you are that coin expert we talked about earlier. To reward your buyers who purchase from you, offer them access to your private group where you'll tell them when new items are stocked in your store and mentoring them on collecting. Your job as group moderator is to allow membership access to the group and to monitor the posts and participate. What kind of group does your products lend themselves to? The sky's the limit. Whenever you hear about reviews and guides, they always seem to be mentioned together, but in fact, they are really two different features that have two different functions. You can find a link to the reviews and guides area under the community tab. Let's talk about reviews. These are designed as user-friendly ways to rate a product. The reviewer can write about how the product worked, if they had any dislikes or any specific information that might be of interest to another purchaser. This is a, a perfect example of how social marketing allows everyone a voice. A reviewer can write the review and others who are considering purchasing can read the review. The reader can rate the author on how helpful the review was. This keeps the, the creator honest. They put their best effort into the review. Most reviewers take pride in their creations and want to stay on the top of the rankings. On each review page, there are links to similar items or the same item as the product being reviewed. So a customer who is ready to buy can read these reviews and then just click right on over into the listings on eBay. While I'm not suggesting any black hat marketing techniques, in other words, anything shady, like writing your own reviews, this is a place where you can ask for a little help. In your follow-up email, ask your customers to review the product. It, you know, if you can afford it, give samples of your product to known reviewers to, to use. You can ask them to review the product in exchange for keeping the item. If it's a more expensive item, let's say a high-end camera, loan it to the reviewer. Let them use it for a few weeks in exchange for the review. When you have the review, reuse the camera by asking a popular blogger to try it and review it on their blog with a link to your eBay store. Guides. Again, the community can participate in these guides and rank the author by giving them stars. You may have noticed those icons after certain user IDs. As a guide writer, how many readers that rank your guide determines the icon you received based on how many good reviews you get, a way to keep you honest. A guide is an excellent way to drive traffic into your listings. CJ Jacinto from XOXMS is a trading assistant. She was recently commissioned to sell antique carnival chalkware. One of her strategies was to write a short history of chalkware. It worked. To date, she's had thousands of visitors to that guide where her listings are on the page. The reader just has to click over to find her offerings in her store. Another good feature is the eBay blog. The eBay blog is provided for free and is a great place for posting short blurbs about your business. They are highly ranked on the search engines when updated regularly. 
If you sent out a great newsletter and wish more people had the opportunity to read it, or are you planning a big sale, blog about it here. You can post items you've recently listed, or you can use it as a way to update your customers about new finds. Blogs are an excellent way to build search engine optimization, build a following, and to let your customers know a little bit more about you. So do allow some of your personality to show through when you're writing. So that's it for this broadcast. If you'd like more information, please check out the eBay Marketing Bible. Of course, it's on eBay or anywhere else on the web that you prefer to purchase books. Written by Cliff Anico and me, Cindy Shebley. Also, check out the WebSellerCircle.com for more tips and techniques on how to improve your small business. This is Cindy Shebley from the WebSeller Circle. I'll talk to you again soon.